We have had a powerful week with Josh McDowell, and there's more to come. Uh, and we're, tomorrow we're going to talk about um, this really vital concern he has about your young people and what's happening on the Internet. But before we get there, uh, we've covered pretty much the highlights of the book Undotted, but this book is a stunner. Uh, it is amazing. I have just thrilled at reading it, and uh, I know you have just listening to Josh, and you're going to want your copy. I know that thousands of you have, are, have already called in or phoned or whatever, but... Uh, if you haven't, you want this book, and we'll let you know how to get it in a minute. But, uh, Josh, when, when I think uh, about your life, uh, not only the shape it's taken, but the shape that it might have taken, uh, I am amazed, I know Steve Arterburn was amazed at the choices you made, but how, how, uh, how, how did this happen that you chose not to be a victim? that you chose not to see yourself as worthless. Was this something that was just intuitive in you? Was this something that someone, maybe your mother, had taught you somewhere along the way? Or was this something you think that God the Holy Spirit was investing in you even before you'd come to faith? I, I, I think the answer to that, part of the answer might be this. Almost anything that happens in our lives, choices we make, decisions, thoughts, normally are the results of somebody's influence in our life. Yeah. I could write a biography different than this one on just how God used people in my life without even realizing at the time to make certain choices, to come to him, to deal with this, everything. I would have to say it was probably a line of people way back when I was a kid. A doctor in Union City, Michigan, Lyle Chapman, who's passed away now. His wife is still alive and his kids. I was quite a good basketball player, very good. My father never once came to a game. And you know, many times I say, God, I understand because, boy, when I saw the movie Hoosier, mm. whoo, I thought, God, thank God my dad didn't come to the games. <laughs> it would have been a real life Hoosier. Mm. He never came to one, and I missed it. My mother couldn't come because she was so big. She couldn't sit in the bleachers or anything. Mm. She would come to almost all my football games and never once saw me play. She couldn't sit in the bleachers. She couldn't stand up. She had to sit in the car. And there was always people lined up in front. She couldn't see the game. She'd sit there and cry mm. during the whole game, my mom. Mm. And this doctor, Lyle Chapman, moved to town. And I went to him for some injury in football or something. I thank God he took a liking to me. He had his own kids and everything. He took a liking to me. I'd go in to see him. I, I would try to go out and hurt myself just so I had a good excuse to go in and say, no. He, would, he showed an interest in me, everything. He, would, he came to almost every basketball game I had. He'd always say, Josh, can you save me a seat? My office doesn't close in just a little bit. I'll be there. Always within 10 minutes a game started, I, looked, I always looked up. There was Lyle Chapman. He would have meals with me. He did something my dad never did in my life. He believed in me. And I really believe the results of him and a couple other people believing in me yeah. caused me, now this is before I came to know Christ, to believe in myself. Yeah. That anything I want to be or do, I can do. And I always believed I don't want anyone to control my life. Now I say anyone but Jesus. Right. And if I looked at myself as a victim, then somebody else was controlling my life. Now this might seem dumb and stupid, but I think it was a main motivation in my life. Uh, if I didn't forgive him, he was controlling my life. Many people, years later, their father is dead and gone, still controls their life. They're trying to live a life to be accepted by their dad. Yeah. They're not free. Yeah. And I always wanted to be free as a kid. <laughs> yeah, it caused a lot of problems for my teachers. <laughs> but, uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons. One man, Lyle Chapman. 
there was a major study done. Uh, I've documented it somewhere in one of my books. Um, they wanted to find, it was a 10 year longitudinal study of why kids at risk didn't commit at risk behavior. Now most studies is why did they commit it? Right. This study was the opposite. Those that didn't, who were at risk, but didn't commit at risk behavior, why? 80% was because some adult took a special interest in their life. That was Lyle Chapman for me. Mm. And my oldest sister, Shirley, and my other sister, June, who so believed in me. They were my icons of heroes, mm. Shirley and June, who were old enough to be my parents mm. uh, in my life. So I would have to say, mm. what kept me from becoming an abuser and out holding others were God using people in my life. It's kind of like a poem I learned years ago. Boy, I haven't thought of this. Mm. He stood at the cross and was all alone with the sun rays in his face. He had no fear for the path had known he was set for the manly race. But the road stood east and the road stood west and no one to share him which was the best. So he stood there at the crossroad alone, all fear with the future race. Along came a man who stood at the crossroad, and I can't remember the rest mm. of it, who showed him the way to go, which mm. way was the best. Well, that was me. I was at a crossroad many times in my life. God planted someone. This is why I say to adults, you never know. When you're involved in a young person's life, mm -hmm. you could be that Lyle Chapman in his or her life that Dr. Lyle Chapman was in my life. He stood at the crossroad to show me which way was a bit. And I found out later he was a believer. Mm. He was a believer. Mm. But you know, the downside was he never truly shared Christ with me. However, he lived Christ his message, the way he lived, was far greater than most per people's verbal proclamation of the gospel. Mm. But there wasn't that, Josh, you need to know Christ. But I might never have come to Christ without that model of Lao Chapman in my life. Now, one other question I want to ask, and uh, the time is almost gone here, but uh, the assumption that I made as I read your book was that once you came to faith, there was no looking back. Is my assumption correct, or have you had uh, moments of crisis in your in, in, of faith in your life? I don't think I've had moments of crises of faith in what I believe. I've had challenges. Yeah. You have to understand, I love challenges. Yeah. I've had many situations, like the young man with Jesus. I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Right. To me, that's healthy. Yeah. If you don't face your unbeliefs, there's always answers. There really are. There's documented historical, evidential answers. Mm. What well, forced me to grow. The challenges to me was, my parents didn't have a whole lot of money or anything. All my teeth are false. They're porcelain crowns because my parents never had the money where I could have uh, braces. Mm. In fact, I'll never forget. I said, Lee, one doctor did all this free in one day, 14 injections, well, 14 crowns. I said, leave one back. He said, why? I said, I believe one of the greatest sins in life is the sin of ingratitude. He said, I said, I never want to forget what he, Christ did through him for me. So you got one tooth there that is the Every original. day when I brush my, nobody else sees it. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. Every day, yeah. thank you for Dr. Rick. He, yeah. And so anyway, wow. that's another man God used in my life to wow. my teeth. And where were we on that question? <laughs> I'm thinking of him right now. I'm looking at your teeth. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty nice. Yeah, but you're talking about how how we, uh, you might be a Dr. Chapman in somebody's life, you know. And I, as you're saying this, I'm thinking about how many uh, men and women have influenced children growing up in very, very bad circumstances from the outside, but just by showing interest. And as Chapman did, I don't think in you. anyone has beat the rap without God using someone in their life, yeah. whether a believer, yeah. non-believer, what? Yeah, somebody's no, got to, relationships are that part. Somebody has to come along and, and do that. Well, friends, tomorrow... Well, that's right. Every day, normally, this is a brand new shirt. Yeah. Every third button down, every shirt I own is a bright red, bright yellow, bright green. Why is that? For, for this reason. Most people come and say, you know you got a red button on? They say, oh, my wife's colorblind. Yeah. No, the reason is, I believe one person can make a difference in the world, but Jim, you got to be willing to be different. Right. My button, which I don't have today because right. a new shirt is different. Nobody's ever seen every shirt, third button down, a different bright yellow, red, green. 
Every time I look at it, my prayer is, Lord Jesus, make me a difference in someone's life today. Huh. I want to be a Lyle Chapman. Yeah. I want to be a Pastor Faye Logan. Yeah. I want to be an Emma Bowder. Yeah. I want to be a Dottie McDowell, my wife, impacting other people's lives. So all my shirts, I have a bright, different <laughs> colored button. Uh, I'd have this if I'd owned it more than uh, right. a few weeks. But to remind me, you got to be different if you want to make a difference.